Hi, and welcome to Infertility Unfiltered, where fertility experts and warriors are joining forces to provide you with tips, inspiration, lessons, facts, and all of the things that you need to take back control of your life and get your baby on board. Hi, I'm Jennifer Robertson, and today we are absolutely blessed to be joined with one of my favorite people. Her energy is absolutely amazing. She's beautiful from the inside out, Patia Kolobova. Now, Patia is a passionate coach who helps corporate women who have been pushed down and have been playing it small to create a life that feels amazing on the inside, not just one that looks good on the outside. She's also the host of the Unapologetically Abundant podcast, which supports you to build strong mindset, confidence, and leave behind your past wounds. Enjoy the present moment and create the life that you deserve. Now, today we are going to be talking about three steps that you can do to feel good and start living in the now, despite the now being not so pleasant. And if you stick around to the end, Tia is actually going to walk us through a beautiful Hawaiian forgiveness prayer as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Tia. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I feel so honored and blessed to be with you today, Jennifer. And you should be like for recording my podcast intro. I'm like, I love this intro. So beautiful. Thank you so much. And also really thank you for all the work that you are creating because it's so needed. These women really need you in their lives. So thank you for everything you're creating. Thank you. Now, before we get into the three steps, I would love for you to tell our audience just a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are now. Absolutely. And, and thank you so much for asking. It's, it's so fascinating when people say like, oh, can you do like the short version or a little bit about you? And it's like, oh, how do I condense myself? <laughs> like four decades of my life. So, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. Like people, when they look at me now, they see like, you know, have a podcast, have a TV show. I'm traveling the world when we can, right? And I attracted the love of my life and I created a life that truly feels fulfilling inside working only with my soulmate clients, hosting women's weekends, retreat, everything sounds and looks amazing, right? But it hasn't been always like that. And I truly believe that women who are so nurturing and compassionate and loving and truly are the lighthouse for other people are the women who went through their own darkness, women who really went through the pain and suffering and can now, now be the light for others. So you know, throughout my first three decades of my life, I went through emotional and physical abuse with my stepfather and eating disorder and truly always searching for the next thing. You know, no matter how many things I have achieved, if I achieved school and, you know, marriage and all these good things that we are meant to do to feel happy, I still didn't. So, and this search of why am I even here? And does it even matter? I went through, you know, eating disorder of 18 years, attempt of suicide. So when we talk darkness, I've been there. I've been there. But also that made me being so, so open, you know, so open hearted, so loving. And that's why so many women want to be around me because they can feel the energy. And I know that if you can feel it if you can see it it's because you're recognizing it in yourself even though when you're going through hardship of life because what is now it's not ideally what we planned right like we plan we put it in our schedule it's happening it's done and then when it's not done as we want it we're like what's wrong with me so i really help women to turn around that what's wrong with me and to see what's unique and beautiful about them so they can really live life that it's aligned with their purpose and they can truly enjoy the now the now it's all that matters yes and i love that it's so vulnerable and and you're so transparent and putting your story out there as well and that not only is that an inspiration but also for them to be able to see that you know if we are walking through trauma right now and as someone who suffers or have su has suffered from infertility, you know, we can get out the other side, but it doesn't have to just be 
when we get out the other side with our baby. Like we can be living an amazing life right now. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. Like what are the three things that you have done in your day, in your life that really allow you to have a beautiful life right now instead of just waiting until this happens, waiting until we have our baby, waiting until you get the house, waiting until you get the job. Like how do you create something that's beautiful right now? Absolutely. And that's so amazing how you ask because you know me, I know you mentioned that you were stacking me, but the thing is that so many of us, we are living in the when land. When I get the baby, when I get the job, when I get the perfect husband, it's when, 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 when. And we are, when we are desiring for the when and focusing on the lack, meaning we're focusing on what we don't have, we're pushing it away. So the three things that I do every single day to stay in the abundance and to really feel in the flow and good in the now are these three things. My morning routine, looking throughout the day for what's good and the nightly routine. And I want to, of course, go deeper on each of them, but those are the three things that when you do them every single day, it's going to really shift your mindset from what's missing into what do I have now? When you focus on what do you have now, you can truly relax. And we all know that when we let go, when we relax, and the simple, super simple example, I know that each and every one of you have done it. You lost your keys. You're looking for them like a crazy. It's nowhere. And then you go at the beginning of where did you start to look for it? And it's just like sitting there because you relax, you surrender. And that's it's very, very important to really relax. So my morning routine, I every single day make sure that I treat myself the way I want to be treated. I always say I treat myself like the goddess, like the queen, because no one else can do that for you. You get to do the things that fulfill you, the things that make you feel good. And it really doesn't matter if it's five minutes or if it's two hours, my and our two hours. I'm so blessed I can do it now. When I was working in a corporate and building my business as a side hustle, there was like five minutes in and out and I'm done. But something was something. So create something that really works for you. And it can be as simple as when you wake up before you get out of the bed, put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly and think about the things you're grateful for. For me, it's like, oh, I'm so grateful I'm waking up with the love of my life. I love my bed. I love this pillow. I love hearing my doggy snoring. It's just the little things. I hear the birds. It's fun. I love that. So I celebrate the little things. And then I think about what am I excited for? Because if you're anything like me, the never ending to-do list, it's in the head and we get into the end of the day and we could keep going, right? So thinking about the things you're excited for it's going to be prompting you for something that you are eager for instead of, oh, I have to do this. And you're already shutting off your energy. One thing you're excited for, gratitude. And the last thing, what is the one thing I will do for myself? It's so easy as a woman to go and be the nurturer and the caretaker and giving everybody. We're such an amazing givers. Girl, I want to really, really remind you how amazing receiver you are when you choose to, when you allow it. And it can be as simple as making your favorite coffee or cacao or go for a walk or turning your phone at 8 p.m. and giving yourself the space, taking bath, taking shower, read a page or two of your favorite book. That's something that you will be looking forward the whole day. How does that feel starting your day like this? You're feeling like the queen. You're relaxed. You're open. You're feeling good in the now right mm -hmm. and it's a choice isn't it you know i mean a lot of the times we're like oh okay I, I just don't have time you know i'm running out the door but we get to choose we get to choose what we do with our time and like i said it can be just five minutes like when you wake up you don't have to like get out and run like the, what i just described to you takes two minutes you don't have two minutes for yourself how do you want to have a baby's Sorry to say that I don't have a babies we're planning for next year, but it's true. Most of my clients are moms. Many of them are single moms. And I know they know if they card out 10, 15 minutes a day for themselves while they're still in bed, 
they're feeling more productive. They're feeling more centered. They're feeling better throughout the day. Give yourself the five minutes or more and you will start feeling the difference right away in the now. Mm -hmm. Then the second step, it's, it's so fascinating. Last week I had a call with my newest client. She was like, Pity, I think something is wrong with me. I always look for what's wrong. I'm like, no, it's completely natural because that's how we are designed. Our brain is designed to protect us. Our brain is designed for survivor. So our brain is always on the lookout. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's different from the norm? So if you look around and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm judging other people. Yeah, that's normal. You cannot control the first thought. That's an impulse. That's like the survivor. You can always choose the second one. So even though when you look for what's wrong, okay, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and acknowledge it. Thank you so much for protecting me. I know you're trying to provide for me. I know you're trying to protect me. Because when we're ignoring these thoughts, it's like a crazy kid in the store that wants to get its chocolate and will scream and scream and scream and scream until you start to be listening. So acknowledge what's coming up for you, the negative thoughts, the judgment, acknowledge it, the inner critic. It's there for you to protect you. Thank you for trying to protect me. I'm choosing again. And what I'm choosing is to look for what's good. And it can be as simple as like, oh my gosh, there's a parking lot close to parking spot close to the door. Oh my gosh, I just got a green. Oh my gosh, I just got a free coffee. Oh, my favorite berries are on sale. Unfortunately, they were not on sale today, but it's, you get to look for what's good because when you're going throughout the day, when you're looking for the good, your brain will prompt you for other things that are good. It's like the universe is like, oh my gosh, she likes this. She likes this. Let me give her more of these people, these experiences, these feelings. It's like the positive snowball. Mm -hmm. And it's only up to you if it's going to be positive or negative. And of course, there can be a little bit of dirt on the snow. That's okay. <laughs> no one is perfect. We're not going to be judging the snowballs. But it's okay. Look for what's good. So that's the second step that I do every single day to feel good in the present moment. I love that. And, and being in that state of, of pure abundance. And I love also that you said that you know, the thoughts that are going to come up and they might be negative and we don't need to punish ourselves. We get to choose again. I love that. Yes. Because like I said, even, you know, and I've been there, you know, Jennifer, when I started on my personal development journey, like, you know, eight years ago and I, a couple years in when I didn't feel like happy and like bubbly. I was judging myself. What's wrong with me? I'm doing so much work. I have a coach. Why am I feeling down? Why am I so negative? I'm not always happy. Well, because you're a human being, you're never going to be hundred percent like on, like you're not the robot. We are here to be feeling our feelings. The, the challenge is when we are ignoring our feelings or when we are trying to bypass them, that's how they're going to get louder or even worse, even worse, they're going to store in your body as a dis-ease. That's when you block yourself from being really blooming and feeling amazing because you're not expressing and feeling your feelings. You're feeling like a crop, feel it. Feel it because then it like, it's like a river. It flows through you instead of staying inside of you. Nobody wants stagnant water inside of us. That stings. <laughs> <laughs> It certainly does. <laughs> so that's, that's my second step. And the third one, it's my nightly routine. And that's usually, to be honest, the most challenging fun for me because I'm always like, let me finish this. I'm filling in the flow. It's 8 p.m. And I'm still finishing recaps for my clients. And I'm like, no. So really, it's like really honoring myself, really having healthy boundaries with myself. Very often we talk about boundaries and toxic relationships and negative people. Well, how about healthy boundaries for ourselves? To put a cap on how much we are doing. Because the laundry is not going to be complaining that it's not done. And if husband does, you can say like, hey, my love, do you want to do it? Or do you want to wait till tomorrow I do it? right? So instead of being on and on and on and on, give yourself space. The nightly routine, it's really about celebrating you. Very often 
we are looking for what's wrong what can we be changing what can we be improving but we really don't celebrate ourselves so every single night in the mirror you go to the mirror and you tell yourself some things you're proud of yourself that day you know because it's so important to celebrate what's working and what i also do at night i do a journaling and I write in my journal the good things that happen in the day. You know how you're always looking for the goodness? Well, at night you recap it because it reminds you of how good certain things felt. And when you're feeling good before you go to the bed, you will be dreaming, you will be feeling amazing, you will wake up rejuvenated, again, relaxed, trusting. It feels so good. So every single night I turn off my phone no later at 8 p.m. and I take a bath or I take a shower. I do some candle. I, I do my golden milk. I read and I just relax. Like I said, it's a work in progress because sometimes I'm like in lunch mode. I'm launching not a money mindset course. So I'm like on, you know, like I'm turned on and I keep going and doing but I can guarantee you when you create that space, even if it's just like 45 minutes or an hour just for yourself, you will feel so much more tapped in and in the flow and good that you will be waking up again excited. I love, 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 love all of that. Oh, yes. And, and I do the morning routine. I do the gratitude. I think maybe my nightly routine could probably use a little bit of extra as well. I'm you know, I need to create those boundaries as well, you know, in terms of time going to bed and, and all of those things. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, you're going to share a forgiveness prayer because on this journey, we do, we do hold so much in terms of guilt and, and shame and all of those different things that we can hold on to. So, so you have a little prayer that you want to walk us through in order for us to, to forgive ourselves or whatever we're holding on to. Absolutely. Because now that we really embrace the now, it's very also important to look in the past or if there was something that came up, like you said, the guilt and the judgment and one of the most simplest and I love simple I love simple because if it's over complicated we're just going to give up sooner or later it's too much and we're like I'm out so when you have these feelings of guilt or shame or really being disconnected there is a beautiful Hawaiian ancient prayer called Ho'oponopono <laughs> And you can even YouTube it, look at the, you know, look at the meditations, look at the music, but it's very simple. It has four phrases that you repeat to yourself. You can journal about it. But what you say is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. It's so simple, but when you repeat it, even when you're listening to it before you fall asleep as a meditation, as a music, but it's so powerful. I remember when I did it the first time a few years ago, I was crying like a little baby. It it just it unlocks something and it releases and it connects back to to love. So it's it's so simple and you can write it also in the show notes, you know. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I love that. And I love you. You're amazing. Oh my goodness, Patia. How can people get in contact with you after this? Where can they find you? The easiest uh, place that I love hanging out every day, Jennifer, she knows I'm always on my Instagram. I do my trainings there. I'm always in my stories. I'm very present in my DMs. I love connecting with my tribe. So it's my name, Petia Kolibova, and I'm sure Jennifer will spell it for you. And my second favorite place, it's my private free facebook group it's for women only unapologetically abundant women and that's a place where i do my free trainings where i share resources mindset and how to really feel good and plug into the community where you can feel safe so those are my two favorites perfect perfect excellent thank you so much for for being here and thank you so much for watching now if you loved this interview as much as i have please feel free to give it a little love yourself. Feel free to share it, like it, and make sure you subscribe to this channel as well because this is just one 
of so many interviews that are being part of the Infertility Unfiltered series. So thank you so much for watching and tune in again.